Hey guys, what's up? Mr. Surplus not here, bringing the, uh, I believe it's the third part to this video on surplus weapons and maintenance. What I mean by maintenance is just the part of it as far as, uh, you know, maintaining your rifles. Um, again, if you're just logging in to this video or checking it out for the first time you were you probably on the third part of it you might want to check out the other parts just to uh, be able to follow up on what we've been um, uploading here as far as maintaining these rifles and <clears throat> um, this is something that it needs to be done you know regularly um, just to keep your rifles in, in good shape and these are some of the things that I use basically just to maintain it okay I wanted to include this because a lot of people have asked me what do I use for retouching my um, surplus rifles okay and um, this is basically what I use it's cold blowing obviously it's made by birch wood casey everybody knows about it but anyways the super blue um, I think they have one be that that's below this one called the perma blue or something like that but this is supposed to be like the darkest one that they have the super blue liquid gum blue little bottle okay and basically this is really good stuff if you use it and you apply it right and you follow the instruction you can actually re-blue um, you know a whole gun with this now a lot of people don't um, prepare the um the uh metal you know the surface the metal that they're working with if you just get this thing and you start um basically uh getting your gun out okay not doing the prep work that the metal needs and you just get a q-tip and start touching up it might work but a lot of times it'll give you like a different type of um color okay it'll have like a different shade or tone uh you know a different color than what you're probably looking to match on your gun now remember and i know guys this has nothing to do with the gun maintenance and what we're going to be doing here but i just wanted to bring it out because once you maintain your guns and you start lubing lubing it up with oil um if with time this thing tends to fade a little bit um, and you're gonna you already have all these oil on your metal like your barrel or whatever you can't just come back and get a q-tip and dab it and retouch it because it's just not gonna stick okay so I've heard a lot of people where they do retouch jobs and they just wipe down their metal you know the metal surface get a q-tip and they dab it and they think that it you know it looks fine but when you really look at it with good lighting you can tell that it didn't pick up the same it didn't match the actual bluing and for the most part listen to this for the most part you're never going to get a, a hundred percent complete color match because different countries use different methods of re-bluing or bluing their their, their guns and this is just like a touch-up if you want to get a, a, a fine even color um, on the on the metal you definitely have to restrip the whole gun you know like strip it completely barrel all metal parts and then use this okay then you're gonna have a very very equal uh, color in the whole metal surface but this is basically, I use it just to touch up, man. I'm telling you, a lot of these surplus guns, if you know who you're buying from, if they're very good at letting you know the condition of the weapon, some play, some some websites, they'll tell you, oh, it's in great shape, you know, bluing it's 85%. Uh, when you get it, this thing looks like it got run over by a freaking tank, you know? And, and, um... And some parts are just full of Cosmoline. It looks like they pulled it up out of, out of a freaking elephant's butt or something. You know? And, and they just don't tell you that. They just want to sell you the gun. So you got to buy from really good, reputable uh, surplus dealers, which I only mainly use one. And this is not an advertisement 
advertisement for, for, uh, for them. I've been dealing with classic arms. Uh, before the company got sold, the owners that, the people that have it now are not the original owners, but they're, they're keeping it up the same way, like as far as posting their arms and everything, the same style, how the other guys will do it. I've bought, a, you know, like, you know, one or two from uh, Samco Global down here. Luckily there, I can go myself because it's here in Miami. And JG Sales, I bought my tool up from them. And, you know, uh, but it's just depending on what you get. I mean, but for the most part, they're in pretty good. The blue one is in pretty good um, condition where you just have to um, basically um, retouch it. Okay? So going back to this, why am I involving this on this videos about main, uh, maintenance, you know, how to maintain your surplus rifle as far as the uh, maintenance that you do on a regular basis? Because if you don't start off by having your bluing pretty much, you know, even and that you did it right from the get-go, when you lay your layer of oil and you lubed up your gun, believe it or not, it's just like wood. You can have defects on wood, on your wood stock. And once you put a finish on it, especially if it's got some type of gloss, like, you know, medium to high gloss or even sand, uh, a satin finish, um, all that blemish and all those gashes and all those dimples and their imperfection on the wood, the finishing of the wood will bring it out, believe it or not. So the same thing works in the metal, okay? Once you lube up, if you're going to show your guns, like sometimes I do, I have a little display uh, rack um, that sometimes I display it. If I have buddies of mine that like this thing coming over and, you know, whatever, you know, we just goof around and talk and stuff. Um, uh, you know, once you, you display your guns and you have your all your metal with the oil on it and everything, you will be able to see in corners and edges where he didn't pick it up right away and, and and people that know that do this stuff they'll know that uh, you know wow you did a terrible touch-up job so what's the proper way of doing this getting the um you know they, they sell like a kit of these that comes in three bottles one it takes it's the rust remover you know the um it does a stripper and if you want you can even go as far as getting your you know like real thin sandpaper or even steel wool and and really really uh, you know bringing it down as much as you want as far as like to the bare metal and the main thing is actually degreasing it you know um, some people use um, uh, mineral spirits um, some people use alcohol um, I've heard of people using um, you know regular automobile degreaser like formula 98 or whatever um, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff. This stuff to uh, clean the grills. Uh, I forgot how you call that. You know, like for your ovens and stuff. Um, some people use brake fluid uh, in a spray, brake cleaner. You know, whatever it will completely take away any oil residue. That's your major enemy on this stuff. Okay, and that's why I wanted to include this because I want to take you step by step on how to, when you clean your weapons, how they're gonna look their best because everything has to do with preparation. I always, you guys that are, are subscribers of mine and have seen most of my channels, I mean, of my videos, you've noticed that I've always talked about the prep work, okay? And it's on everything, on shooting, uh, reloading, same thing, prep work. So it's, it just goes like that, okay? If you're building a house, you gotta have a good foundation. If you're gonna have a nice roof that will last you for 30, 40, 50 years, you gotta have good walls and good perimeters and, and, and all that so where your trusses are gonna sit firm and, and leveled and you know everything has to do with this man with the prep work okay so you need to make sure your metal is completely clean of any oil residue that will be your main enemy and then after that you can if you just do retouching you can retouch um, and do it a few times okay we'll take a couple times and then rinse it off with um, cold water some people have luck by once they clean the metal really really good some maybe i'll probably make a video you know i'll probably do that you know get like a regular piece of metal and even if it's small and just do a rebluing um basically if you want to go ahead and buy the kit of the three little bottles you can do that but you the main the main one that you need is this one okay this is the main one that you need because the other stuff like the degreaser 
to remove grease and, and the you know grum and everything um, you can just basically um, you know there's other stuff that you don't have to you might have it you might even have it around the house and that might work for you okay maybe a little bit of very very high uh, grit sandpaper steel wool 3-0 or 4-0 steel wool and basically it's just that you know we're getting the metal down to like bare surface and degreasing it really good and then you use this stuff and you follow the instructions some people like to get a blower that has worked at times it all depends see you can just re do use this and use regular water and rinse off the bluing one time okay the first time with cold water let it dry then you want to get your steel wool and hit it again kind of like even it out then you know give it a while then hit it again and go through that procedure three or four times and you might get the type of sh shade and tone and color that you're looking for uh, that depends on the metal the consistency of the metal what it was used you know what metal uh, part uh, or, or metal um, uh, type of metal you're dealing with okay sometimes I've had better luck and people have done it that way you know with getting a blow dryer and heating up the metal and then you know applying this stuff to it and doing it that way you know even though it's cold bluing but you're heating up the metal then you when you take you put the stuff on and then you're gonna take it off you use cold water and, and you just gotta you know play with it and see what works for you okay but this is one thing to do um, if you're gonna go ahead and refurbish your wood um, you know your whole rifle you wanna make sure you do a good touch-up work um, that's what I, basically what I've done in most of my guns some more than others uh, maybe some people might call it like you know like rebluing like a good part of the gun well you know I call it uh, I call it touch up okay like retouching it I mean if I don't have to do the whole gun where I'm gonna strip everything and and do it which is that's gonna be a labor consuming like crazy um, and there's good videos out there that you can you know people have videos uploaded on doing that stuff and, and, and they're good videos um, but basically, if I don't really have to do 100%, you know, on the gun, I call it touch up, man. You know, I mean, so, um, all right, guys, we're going to come back to the part now of completely um, getting into the maintenance part of it. I just wanted to bring this up so you guys could see what I use to, for touching up my um, blowing. And once I get a nice job done, then once I, I lay that oil uh, on it to protect the metal, it'll look really nice and at times you can't even tell that it got touched up okay so i'll check you guys out in a little bit